dies, right? Uh, dies for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, primarily, right, and on the um, the battlefield, right? Uh, but also it, it includes those who are, you know, um, you know, uh, struggling and giving this da'wah to keep the message of Islam, right, alive, right? And those who sacrifice their, their lives, right, their wealth, right, their, their, their families, right, for this da'wah, right, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, he is, uh, 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 he is the, 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 the grantor of provisions, right, and he can be wars, right, without any type of limits. Um, so this is a, a, a status in which, you know, uh, most of the Muslims, um, they grant, you know, Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz, you know, it's this martyrdom because, right, he had the opportunity to actually um, not give a lecture, right? Uh, he had an opportunity to actually seek asylum, right? In different countries, they were offering him, but he decided to come back and still continue this fight for justice, right? To come back and actually, you know, teach, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, Orthodox Islam and, and, and so forth and so on, right? And this is why we um, give him this title of, you know, being a shaheed, being a martyr, right, in Islam, because uh, he continued to to give the da'wah, right, uh, even when he knew that his life was actually threatened. Um, and in fact, um, tomorrow will be um, the, the anniversary of his assassination. He was assassinated on February 21st, um, 19. Um, 1965, and Subhanallah, he was assassinated in front of his his wife, right, as well as his two young uh, his two daughters at that time, right, and uh, and his wife is also pregnant, you know, with with twins at that time, right. So, you know, can you imagine the uh, the, the the trauma, right, that his wife, you know, suffered and the, and his children, you know, suffered, you know, ap, you know, witnessing um, this assassination. Right um, of um, of their beloved husband and 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 and, and father, right? Subhanallah. Uh, but he died again, sacrificing himself, right, to um, keep the message of Islam, you know, um, alive. Um, and we're not going to get into the details of the life of Malcolm Max, and you know, uh, many people, you know, already familiar with you know some aspects of his life. Um, you know, and of course, you know, if you read the autobiography um, uh, of Malcolm X, um, written by um, um, Alex Haley and any other type of materials out there, documentaries, we kind of, you know, already familiar with, you know, the the actual um, transition that he actually that he went through. Uh, we know that he was born as Malcolm Little, and then, you know, um, uh, as a young man, you know, when he entered the prison system. Um, he changed his last name to X because he wanted to remove uh, this concept of the slave master, right? Uh, you know, from you know from his from his name, you know, which is Little, and this is why he took the the name of, of X, um, you know, to 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 remove himself, you know, from you know uh, this mental, the spiritual, you know, this you know this physical, you know, slavery that. Uh, many of the uh, African Americans uh, still suffered um, during um, during that time, um, but the latter part of his of his life, uh, we're talking about you know in 1964, uh, where he um, uh, uh, changed his name to Malik as uh, Shabazz, right, and this is his transition from uh, the Nation of Islam to uh, Orthodox um, Sunni Islam. Right, and we said 1964, right? And subhanAllah, he was assassinated in 1965, right? So we're talking about him only being a Muslim, right? Being a Muslim for for a year, right? For a year, right? And, so, and some change, right? And, and subhanAllah, I mean, if, you know, this year is extremely important, right? In, in his life, right? Because all of the things that he did in his previous life, right? If he did not take his shahada, it would not have meant anything. We would not be having this conversation, right, about Malcolm X, you know, today, as you know, within the ranks of, of, of Islam, within the ranks of, of, of the Muslims, right? And this leads me to the hadith. And, you know, and, you know, subhanAllah, when we talk about, you know, life changing experiences, you know, and um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the, you know, um, uh, Imam Abu Samaya for the efforts that they're doing for the uh, the reverse of Islam, 
You know, I mean, this is, you know, I mean, we're talking about changing your whole life, your your your, um, your lifestyle, you know, your your mannerisms, your behavior, right? And you know, and and many of you know, many of us, even those who were born Muslim like, like myself, we had to go through some type of life changing experience where we had to realize that Islam it is the way, it is the only way, right? It is you know the way to our salvation, right? It is the way you know for us to you know, become better human beings. Um, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Right, the Prophet وسلم, he said that uh, one of you will be doing the deeds of the people of the hellfire Right until it's only a distance of an arm length between this person and the hellfire, right? And then the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kicks in, right? And then this person begins to do the deeds, the works of the people of paradise. And as a result, right, this person will enter into, into paradise, right? Um, you know, and, and this is what we're looking at when we talk about, you know, Al-Hajj al Malika Shabazz is that, you know, I mean, um, the, the life that he lived, you know, prior to, right, that last year of his life, right, even, you know, the, the Surah Islam that he was promoting, right, he would have been held accountable, right, for that, right, subhanAllah, right, but that last year of his life wiped out all of the, the negative things that he did, right, uh, while he was Malcolm X and while he was Malcolm um, Little, Right, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also says in the amal bi khawatim, right, that indeed the deeds are based upon right the khawatim, right, the last deeds, right. Where and then insana ida khuti malahu bil khair dakhla jana, and if the man, if a person, right, it is written for this person, right, or or if his deeds are in his last deeds are good, then he will enter paradise. When can if he had mada min amrihi musi'an. Right. And if this person, right, and if this person um did any bad, right, in this past, right, and then he of course comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he repents and or or he you know takes his the shahada before his death, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept. Right, the tobe of this person, right, and this person will enter paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our toba, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, grant us all um, paradise. Um, and this is a significant document, and uh, many people may not have even seen this document. Uh, this is the actual uh, Shahada certificate, right, uh, of uh, Malcolm X. Right, and you see that it is signed Malik Ash Shabazz, right? And this is indicates that he had changed his name before he made the Hajj, right? And that he testified the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he testified that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, is was the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his last prophet, right? And he received the Shahada certificate from the Islamic Foundation of New York. Prior to him going, setting off to make the pilgrimage, right to make the Hajj, right? Because we all know, right? For those that uh, that perform Umrah, right? I know that some of y'all are uh, probably on the trip um, uh, with uh, Abu Sumeya, uh, you know, a couple, uh, I think, weeks ago uh, for the Umrah, right? And some of y'all, you know, may have made Hajj, right, already. But in order for you to make the Hajj or the Umrah, what, what's one of those documents that you have to produce? Right, it is a it is a shahada certificate, right? Uh, so subhanAllah, you know, uh, you know, uh uh Malik Shabazz, he also had to um produce this document before setting off uh, for Hajj. And not only that, when he reached um uh you know Saudi Arabia in the airport of Jeddah, they took him right and they interrogated him because they I mean they knew Malcolm X, right, and they knew what he stood on, right? So they interrogated him, right? To, make sure that he was, right, a Muslim, right, a, a Orthodox Sunni Muslim, right, before allowing him to 
uh, to go off and, and make the pilgrimage, right? And he he did pass the litmus test, um, alhamdulillah, right? But after this experience of Hajj, um, you know, uh, it was definitely life changing. And there were uh, basically um, three things that drastically changed, right, about uh, Al Hajj Malik al Shabazz, right? Um, and of course, one of those things is, right, was his his name, right? His name, and, and as we even saw in the document, that name was actually, that was a name that he adopted before he, right, before, um, uh, before he actually um, set off. Um, the second thing was his view on race, right? And we know that with the nation of Islam, right, he uh, felt that, um, you know, white people were, were the devils, right? And he, along with the nation of Islam, they, they promoted separation, Right, just just like um, the, uh, you know, many whites they wanted you know separation uh, between the the races, right? The nation of Islam also promoted you know the uh, the separation of um, you know of, of 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 races, right? But when he you know uh, went perform Hajj, and you can uh, uh, read his letter that he wrote from Hajj, or they have videos of actually you know reading of, of the letter, right? He is whole perspective about race change, right? Because we know that when you perform Hajj, when you perform the Umrah, right? This is, you know, I mean, this is the Bani, this is a Bani Adam. This is, these are the children of Adam. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created them, right? From different colors of the clay, right? So it's a representation of all ethnicities, all races, all languages, right? And so forth, um, and so forth and so on. Um, and the last thing is, is his methodology for achieving uh, liberation, right? And that was, of course, a universal Islamic methodology. Even he stated, right, that the, the, that the problem to America's race can only be solved through Islam, right? And in addition to that, uh, in the political side, he um, took more of an international platform, right? He was looking for an international platform Right to actually take the United States on trial, to put them on trial for violation of human rights, right? To put them on trial for violation of human rights, and this is why he traveled to different countries so that he could get a platform um, at the United Nations um, table to speak, right, and to um, present his case, right, in front of the United Nations. And this was, right, this was, you know, I mean, uh, serious concerns, you know, for. Uh, the United States, you know, government, right, and there were other concerns, you know, from um, the previous organization that he was that he was part of. Um, so the next part is the the Iberi Malcolm, right, and um, you know who performed, you know, the Zanaza for 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 Malcolm X, right? I, I, I should have did your homework, right, uh, by now, uh, and I also mentioned at the beginning of the of the presentation. Uh, but subhanAllah, if you look at many of the, uh, the, 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 the video clippings, if you, uh, even the movie, um, uh, you know, Malcolm X that was done by Spike Lee, um, you know, um, you know, and, and, and the Ebony pictorial, um, um, you know, for black history, um, you know, th this is a, a very popular picture, you know, um, that is found there. Right in in the in in these videos and and um and th these publications, however, rarely would you find the name of the person, right, that actually is standing there, right, with the 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 Saudi regalia um on, right, and with the, with his hands raised, right, uh, saying Allahu Akbar to to start the the janaza uh, to janaza salat, right, and um. And, 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 you know, and, and of course, I mean, there may be some agenda, you know, behind that, right? And many people actually think that this is the Sheikh from Sudan, that um, when Malcolm went over to perform Hajj, that was actually sent over with him to teach him Islam within that year period, right? Uh, you know, but in fact, um, that was uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Ahmed Hassoun. And Sheikh Ahmed Hassoun, um, he was not present at the Janaza. Sheikh ha Ahmed Hassoun, he was actually the one that performed the the ghusl, right, and the the kefin, right, the 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 washing and the shrouding, 
right, of um, of, of Hajj Malik al Shabazz, right, and it was my grandfather Hajj um, Hisham Jabra that actually performed the the Salat al Janazah and also the um, the burial um, and and going to the actual grave um, and making sure that he was um, buried um, properly. Right, so these are some of the um, the pictures that you may see online or in some of these uh, the actually uh, video clips. But again, uh, many people do not know that it was actually an American born, um, you know, uh, Haj Hisham Jabra that actually uh, performed um, this janazah um, in 1965. And Subhanallah, my grandfather he actually embraced Islam in 1954 and 1955. So. 10, 11 years prior to the assassination of, 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 of Malcolm X, right? My grandfather was already, you know, he was already a seasoned um, uh, Muslim. And in fact, he was the national imam for the Adina Law Universal Arabic Association, which is considered the oldest uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic organization founded upon the Quran and the Sunnah uh, and founded and established by indigenous Muslims um, here, born and raised um, in, um, in 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 America, um, right? So here, um, as I mentioned before, that the janazah, um, that the the washing and the shrouding, it was done by Sheikh Ahmed uh, Hassan, who was from Sudan. Um, and he was sent um, with Malcolm to to teach him um, Islam, the proper Islam, um, within that year after returning from Hajj. And my grandfather, he was honored to actually uh, perform the Salat al Janazah uh, for that. And and two, a lot of times when you look online for the for the Janazah of Malcolm X, you see two different pictures. Right on the left, you see the picture of Malcolm X. Right in a suit, and on the right you see Malcolm X right in the shroud, right because who the per, the people that were that were um, actually had the um, was initially you know um, in charge of his body were the OAAU, which is the organization that uh, Malcolm X he actually founded, but they didn't know anything about Islam, right? They didn't know anything about Islam. You know, Islam was still you know like brand new, was just a shahada, right? So they didn't know what to do, right? They didn't know what to do. Right. So they just, you know, did what they thought, you know, I mean, you know, what normal funerals did. Right. And this is where um, Sheikh Ahmed Hassan, you know, he said he stepped in, right, the Sheikh from Sudan, right, from Mecca. Right. He said, no, no, this is, you know, this is wrong. Right. We have to make sure that we give him his proper washing. Right. And and trouting. Right. So. Um, so on the right, you see that he, uh, that he was properly uh, washed and he was properly um, shrouded. Um, and, you know, and, and, and this is why, too, this is one of the reasons why it took, uh, it was a delay. Right? It was about, what, six, seven days, right, before or after the assassination, um, before the, the actual um, uh, to, to NASA, right, because there was a lot of politics behind it. Um, but also, too, right, the people that were um, handling the body at that time, they did not know what to do until uh, the people of the Quran assumed and they stepped in and they made sure that um, he received his, his final rights. Um, so a very important um, um, quote that is actually mentioned in um, my grandfather's book, and uh, we actually decided to put these two quotes um, in the on the back cover of the book. It says, where... The Muslim world have been silent. We have been outspoken. Where well, the world have been shocked and confused, we have been we have had been steadfast and organized. Uh, we are all we all had succumbed to fear and threats. We affirmed our faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for the world to witness. History has recorded many my participation at the Zanaza of Al Hajj Malik, but few in history has ever reported or known that uh, we were an indigenous. Uh, indigenous community of Sunni Muslims born, raised, and touched by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on the soil of uh, of the of the United States, right? And this is actually my a picture of my grandfather's sheikh, right? And we call him the Mujaddid of, of our time, the Reform of our time, right? He was born in he was born in North Carolina, right? In Lumberton, you know, North Carolina, right? He went through a couple movements. He went through. Um, um, the uh, uh, more science, you know, temple. And then in 1929, he broke away from that, 
right? And he traveled to um, to Egypt, or actually he traveled to Turkey first for a year, right? And then he traveled to Egypt and he remained in Egypt, right, for five years, right? He remained in Egypt for five years and he was studying Islam, right? And he was studying, uh, he was studying um, um, uh, Arabic uh, and he came back, he came back in um, 1936, right? And this is when the actual da'wah, right, began, right? And he was, at, I mean, based off of, you know, I mean, he is the one that um, that brought the, the Quran and the Sunnah, um, you know, to America from amongst the indigenous, indigenous Muslims, right? And he was the only one that would, that had actually traveled abroad, right? And actually learned Islam and brought it back, right, to, to the indigenous, indigenous uh, um, um, community, right? And he, he came back in 1936. So we're talking about um, in 1936 to 19 to 2022, we're talking about what? Um, uh, Subhanallah, almost what? 100 years? 90? Uh, no, what is it? 1936 um, uh, to 2022, right? So what's that? Almost 100 years, right? Almost 100 years um, of, of, of da'wah right here, right? And this is 1936. So it, remember, I, I said that my grandfather embraced Islam right, in 1954, 1955, right, so that was, you know, he was given da'wah 20 years, you know, before even my grandfather uh, embraced Islam, right, and then, um, and then uh, if you add another, what, uh, 10 years to the assassination of Malcolm X, because a lot of people, when you think about Islam in America, you think about the nation of Islam, right, but many, uh, many people do not know Right, 86 years, right? Uh, yeah, 86 years. Um, uh, many people don't know about um, Professor Muhammad Muhammad as a dean and his travels to Egypt, right, and studying at the uh, General Center uh, World uh, Young Muslim uh, Young Young Men uh, Muslim Association uh, for five years, uh, studying Arabic, studying Quran, studying Islamic studies, right. And this is one of the institutions that was established in in, in Philadelphia, right. And you can see, you know, the right the Arabic writing. Right. Um, and, you know, the, the teaching, you know, uh, you know, Islam, sort of the Fatiha. Right. Here are some of the articles that are actually documented right in the newspaper right here in America. Right. Mission official explains standards of Islamic faith. Right. Negro Muslims here celebrate feasts of pilgrimage to Mecca. Right. So here um, that middle article is talking about Eid al Adha. Right. The Quran replaces Bible in court uh, for actions of Muslims. So they did not even, you know, um, you know, the concept of swearing on the Bible. Right. That was replaced. Right. That was replaced by swearing on the Quran in the courts. Right. And we're talking about, you know, the the early uh, the early 30s. Right. Subhanallah. Um, you know, um, and here you can see, you know, I mean, just the institution of, of knowledge. You can see. Uh, for example, you know, the, um, the sister, you know, wearing the hijab, you can see um, the brothers are praying. I think um, I think this is um, on 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 the Eid um, celebration. Right. And then and, and actually in, in 1938, he established. Right. Or he actually got recognized. Right. Because the paperwork was submitted, you know, before that. But he got recognized as, you know, an official organization. And, and that was when Camden right, was the uh, the capital of. Uh, of uh, New Jersey, right? Uh, and, you know, we're not going to get into the details of the, you know, of, um, you know, the details of the relationship between America and, you know, and, and the Muslim world, right? But this information is, you know, well, well, uh, well documented, right? This is, um, you know, the Ezzedine Village, which was in Hamilton, New Jersey in 1940. They would have, you know, uh, general assemblies. They would have, you know, conferences, right? And so forth and so on. You see the gentleman on the left, Right with the striped right that is Muhammad um, Professor Muhammad uh, as a Dean um, you know in in his in in the community of Muslims you know that were at an annual um, conference um, at at that time um, you know they also you know purchased property um, you know um, um, during that particular time you know and they established you know different units uh, across. Uh, across uh, across uh, the United States, right? And in 19, one unique thing, as we conclude, uh, one unique thing was um, that there were different types of Islam in America, right? You had the Nation of Islam, you had the Ahmadiyya, you have you know um, the Tariqa, 
uh, different tariqa, you know, in, in this time. Uh, and Muhammad, uh, Professor Muhammad as a dean, right, he actually called a, a conference, the first conference in Philadelphia in 1943, right, to, to unify um, the Muslims and to introduce them to, right, to the, uh, to, to the, to the actual Sunnah. Um, and they came up with like a, a 10 year plan, right? And, you know, they had minutes, you know, of, of the meetings and so forth and so on. But one of the main things was to, uh, here as I highlight in red, Adina Law, uh, Universal Arab Association, uh, Muslims of America, Academy of uh, Islam International Incorporated, uh, Temple of Islam, Islamic Association of Muslims, the Muslim 10 year plan. Universal Muslim League of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Missionary, right? So he called um, called them all to the conference, right? And the main thing about the conference was, right, to, right, uh, to unite the people according, right, in, in accord with teachings of Al-Quran. And out of all of those people that you saw in that in that photo, he was the he was the only one that with formal Islamic formal Islamic knowledge because he had he had actually traveled um and and learned um Islam um you know um in in Egypt you know stand, studying with the Shiyuk there right and and bringing back um the Dean um you know alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh you know have mercy on all of them you know Professor Muhammad as a Dean uh, my grandfather um Sheikh Hisham Jabber Right, as well as um, Al Hajj Malik um, Al Shabazz. Um, so we're going to pause here uh, uh, for the actual presentation, uh, and you know, just giving you a glimpse of you know, um, you know, the history um, that you know um, that we're trying to preserve, and that was one of the uh, the main things that we wanted to do by um, rewriting um, uh, the the my grandfather's book, I Bury. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, Assalamu alaikum to that. Okay, maybe when I um, uh, when I stop sharing the screen, uh, probably uh, muted. So I'm that. So I was saying that this is the 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 um, the information, uh, the history that we're trying to preserve. You know, and you know, this is living history. You know, these are things that, you know, uh, I grew up, you know, um, you know, that we're talking about, you know, at the kitchen table, you know, uh, with my with my father, you know, having these conversations, you know, with my grandfather, uh, you know, and, you know, um, you know, getting this firsthand information. And, you know, we've been doing a lot of research um, about this. And subhanAllah, even uh, we um, uh, just recently received a, a, a thousand page uh, document, you know, of the FBI files of the Adina Law Universal um, Arab Association. Um, and subhanAllah, I mean, a lot of the information that documenting, you know, the da'wah of the Muslims starting from the, uh, starting from actually before Professor Ezzedin um, um, traveled to Egypt in, in 1920, or Turkey in Egypt in 1929, right? But these documents document everything that he was doing prior to his travels. His travels to Turkey, as well as you know, his travels to Egypt, and and, and coming back to America um, until until his actual passing um, in nineteen in nineteen fifty fifty seven. Um, I guess we could take some questions at this time, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh um, Usameya. Yeah, for sure, for sure, inshallah. Ta'ala. We can take some questions. Uh, like always, you can either put them in the chat, um, or you can go ahead and start raising your hands, and then we'll call upon you, brothers and sisters, as your hands are raised. So, brother Omar, your hand is raised. Is that the Omar that I think it is? What's going on? Okay, this is a different Omar. Okay, <laughs> how's everything? Yeah, we, we, met, we, met, we met in Delaware and also in, uh, in Jersey. Oh, okay, well. Omar. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking uh, Omar from um, uh, Cuba. Uh, I haven't seen him or spoke to him in a while. I don't know if Imam uh, Abu Samir still is in contact with him. He was at Miftah Loom. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, so um, you have a question, uh, uh, Brother Omar? Yeah, Sheikh. So um, so with regarding, subhanAllah, because, uh, 
you know, as, as you're describing all of this in like the timeline um, and kind of the people who, who are alive, who have, you know, uh, as they say in like Hadith, right, we still have this, this chain of transmission. I've heard it from people who have heard it from people who were there, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and as you see, you're showing us uh, documents and things like this. Um, sometimes I also get the sense that, you know, perhaps uh, people who are reverts and have studied this, um, I have studied history, perhaps know this history a lot more than like, you know, uh, Muslims who have come here uh, or people who haven't studied the black history and things like that. Um, so my question is, is there any, um, is, is any of this information like in like a place like a museum uh, where people can view it and receive like a tour or uh, has there been any money kind of like put forth towards that by, uh, by no. the federal government or by different <laughs> organizations? Stuff. Probably, probably not the federal government, you know, um, because they've been concealing this information uh, for a long time, you know, I mean, because if, if you say, you know, um, you know, when people say, you know, Islam in America, they say nation of Islam, you know, right? Um, and they've removed that whole narrative of, you know, this Quran and the Sunnah being established um, in, in, in 1936 with Muhammad, Professor Muhammad as a dean, right? Um, you know, I mean, you talk about 86 years of, you know, uh, of Islamic work, you know, because after the Sheikh passed away um, in 1957, my grandfather became the national imam for the same organization, right? Um, and, you know, and, and the da'wah that he actually has done, you know, here in America, right, uh, up until his passing, my, my grandfather dedicated his whole life, you know, to, to, to da'wah, right, but there were also units, so we had units in, um, in, in Newark, there was a unit in Elizabeth, there was a unit in uh, Florida, there was used a unit in Cleveland, there was a unit in Virginia, there was a unit in um, uh, Buffalo, um, um, there was a unit in, um, uh, uh, yeah, there was uh, there was um, in, in in Hamilton, right, New Jersey, right. So there was a unit in, in Philadelphia, right. So there was several units, and I think that they calculate about thirteen, about thirteen units uh, from from Adina Law University Arab Association, right, at that particular time. And then there were also branches from that. So if you've heard, of, for example, of um, the State Street Masjid uh, by Sheikh Dawood Faisal, right, Sheikh so Sheikh Dawood Faisal. Right, he was a student of Professor as a dean, right? Um, you know, and he had the that that the masjid um, uh, um, there in New York, um, and from there the um, the um, uh, the the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the Dar, right? These are all you know products of you know um, uh, the State Street Masjid um, at that particular time, but it all goes back to right, Sheikh um, uh, Professor Muhammad Muhaz uh, as a dean. Right, so this a lot of this information is definitely firsthand, uh, firsthand inform information. Um, so there are a few places where you can find this document, this do uh, documentation. There are a few books out there. Um, there's also some uh, information in the um, Islamic Heritage Museum in, in Washington D.C. Right, and then, uh, but most of the information is actually just. Uh, through the families that were part of this organization, right? Like the Jabba family, like the Bashir family, um, here in Elizabeth, the Ismail family, right? The Abu Bakr uh, family. So there's just, you know, information that haven't necessarily been published. But so what we did was, you know, we kind of added some of this information to the second edition of I Buried Malcolm X. But our next project is actually to just talk about uh, Adina Law University Arabic Association and, and the, the work that it actually has done here in, in America. So we're going to expound upon that, right? And one of the goals is actually uh, working on a um, encyclopedia, right? And the encyclopedia of the Islamic presence of Muslims here in America, right? Uh, 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 in America, and then possibly uh, working on a documentary uh, for that as well, um, inshallah ta'ala, right? So this is... Um, you know, our first, you know, project, you know, for that greater project. Uh, so just make dua for us, inshallah. Um, so inshallah, we have some other questions in the chat. Uh, one of the things that I also want to say, mashallah, um, alhamdulillah, uh, Sheikh Hisham Jabir, mashallah, and being, uh, mashallah, a pillar was that, mashallah, he also founded 
Alhamdulillah, the first group of Puerto Rican Muslims no, no. called Banu Saqar, Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, over, you know, 40, 50 years ago as well. So, mashallah, you know, Alhamdulillah, he, uh, mashallah, he has, mashallah, left his seeds, mashallah, well planted, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, we have been also, mashallah, the recipients of, uh, mashallah, his benefit, mashallah, tabarakah wa ta'ala. Um, and we, um, we have that we have that in the book as well. So we made sure that we added um, Beit Saka in in the book. Alhamdulillah, um, a lot of the information that we receive is from the the article the um, that was on the the the, um, the internet as well. Um, but you know that was that was a definite you know because this was you know major major da'wah um, you know for um, for 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 my grandfather. Alhamdulillah. So may Allah spend what I put it on his scale of good deeds. Amen, amen, ya Rabbi, amen. Uh, one sister, she asked, inshallah, Tara, she said, is there any reason um, why uh, the immigrant community in New Jersey or New York um, like didn't step up uh, in trying to perform uh, the janaza of uh, uh, Malcolm X? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you're talking about the climate of that time, um, you know, 1965, right? I mean, it was a climate of, you know, I mean, just assassination. I mean, how many people, how many, you know, uh, black leaders and activists were, were assassinated uh, during that time, right? Even you had the, the president of the United States, uh, John F. Kennedy, that was assassinated, right? So there was um, a lot of um, threats, a lot of tension, you know, at that particular time. Um, and, you know, the immigrants, you talk about, you know, status, you know, as well, you know, not losing, losing, losing their, their, their immigration status, Right, you know, so there was a lot of threats, you know, on, from that that um, that perspective, right? And then you have some, um, uh, you know, because there was threats, you know, to people' life. That was like, you know, if anyone that touches the body, this body is going to have the same fate as Malcolm, right? So, so my grandfather and the community here in Elizabeth, they took a risk. They went to perform this janaza. Right, with the intention of not returning back. You know, subhanAllah. I mean, like, you know, I mean, they was ready to to die to make sure that, you know, the brother in the slam received his 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 final rights uh that is due upon him, you know, as a Muslim. Right. And then there's also, you know, some political things, you know, that were actually attached to it. So I mean, you know, I mean, from the from the from the US government and from the nation of Islam, right? So just with the combination of uh, of, uh, of both of those, right? The the immigrant Muslims, you know, did not want to touch. And then, of course, you had some that were still in doubt of, you know, was was Malcolm really a a a Muslim, right? Uh, maybe the information did not reach them um, about uh, about you know Shahada or you know, I mean, or even you know, after performing Hajj, was he really a, truly a Muslim and so forth? So on. This is and this is what we wanted to definitely highlight um and in, in um in the book and this is what we've been um highlighting as a family for many years and my grandfather will always you know um um defend you know the honor um uh, of our uh, beloved uh, our, our beloved brother uh, Malcolm um and, and lectures you know every single year um I, I know that was a question too from about um my grandfather's connection to the Dar and, and Sheikh Dawood and, and yeah. Khadija here in um, New York. Um, uh, and, and, and and of course, you know, my my father can, you know, speak more about that that relationship. But my father, but um my father used to do the khutbah at the masjid uh when Sheikh Dawood um uh, actually uh, was uh, was uh, fell ill. Uh, so my father was one of the khatibs, the rotating khatibs, you know, um, at the masjid. So he knew Sheikh Daoud, you know, uh, very, very closely, you know. And of course, I mean, my my father and my grandfather, uh, my 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 grandfather had a working relationship with um, Sheikh Daoud, um, and um, I mean, just all of all of the the the, the imams, um, and you know, they're they in New York. And, and my father, you know, he spent a lot of time, you know, in New York. So he knows all of the imma. You know, there, um, you know, there in um, in in New York um, um, as well. So that was a working relationship, you know, with the brothers there. But as I mentioned before, um, so um, the state seat measure that was um, ran by Imam Dawood, and many people thought he was, you know, actually, you know, uh, from Morocco. However, he he that did claim, you know, the Moroccan ancestry, 
All right. And many people thought that he was actually, you know, uh, Moroccan instead of, you know, actually born and raised, you know, in, in, in America. Um, but he he was, a, as I mentioned, he was a student of uh, Professor Ezzedine. And in fact, when Professor Ezzedine um, came back from the um, his trip from Egypt, right, it was uh, uh, Sheikh Dawood that picked him up from the airport. Uh, and this is actually one of the, uh, this documented in the FBI, <laughs> the FBI uh, document um, as well. So he was the one that that picked them up, and then from there they had a, a working relationship, uh, and um, and that relationship continued, you know, um, after Professor Ezzedine um, passed away, and my grandfather um, uh, continued um, as the the, the national imam for the for the same organization. <laughs> Um, someone in Charlotte sent me a private message, uh, Yusuf, saying that uh, they are a photographer and a filmmaker and that they would love uh, to make it uh, a mini documentary about uh, your family's life uh, and your grandfather. And if uh, you're interested in Charlotte Tala, you know, they can share their information. So I told them to send it to me via email and I'll share it yeah. with you. Definitely, 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 definitely. I have a question. Father, have you? Uh, when Malcolm was going through what he was going through, like the courage or like the power to know that you're changing the world and everything is coming against you at that time from like leaving the nation of Islam and finding his, his path and his straight path and going against all odds, like, like from, from you or relatives who knew him or just, you know, us studying him and his life, subhanAllah, uh, how, how, like, what's your advice or like, what was going on or like, I don't know if I answered the, I asked the question correctly, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of going through like, like to follow my own path and I'm going against all odds and I'm feeling a little scared, but you know, I, I look up to Malcolm X as one of the, one of the best examples in American history and, and all you guys are, are, are to, to, to thank as well. And yeah. we came so far as an Ummah. So subhanAllah, jazakallah, karen, shukran, and mashallah, to better kalahu fiqh. So do you have any advice for, for, for young men trying to be leaders of the Ummah or like going against culture or societal restrictions or walls or things yeah. like that for the future okay. of today's day and age, inshallah? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, subhanAllah. So there's a, a couple of things in jazakallah for, for the question. Um, number one is that, you know, I mean, just the, the strong personality that 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 he had and you know, in the organization that he built, right? When Islam, when he found out about true Islam, right? None of the other stuff mattered, right? So he, he, there was a progression in his life. He was always searching. He was always trying to, 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 to improve, right? To get better, right? And I, I think that's extremely important because Right. There's many people, even, for example, you have Farrakhan, right? Farrakhan has made Hajj, right? The leader of the uh, nation of Islam now, right? But, you know, I mean, but he still is preaching, you know, right, right, the same uh, tenets of, of the belief system of the nation of Islam, right? And in fact, my grandfather was in Hajj when, when, uh, when uh, Farrakhan was there. And we have a picture that's actually in the book of them standing next to each other, right, as well, right? But the thing is that when you think about someone with that personality, that charisma, right, that, 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 that power that can do anything, right, he could have just went back and, you know, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, to continue, like, teaching some of the things, he could have, you know, he could have, you know, became a self-reclaimed, you know, prophet himself, he could have did so many things, right, with, with, with who he was, but you know, when he actually, um, you know, when he was introduced to true Islam, he never, he never turned back. He embraced it fully, right? Um, so that's very important that we always have to continue to, to progress, right? And then when we, you know, alhamdulillah, when we have, when we, uh, when Islam is actually introduced to us in its purest form, then we have to embrace it wholeheartedly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ya ladina amanu wa dhukulu fin sinmi kafa. O you who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. Right. And this is what our beloved brother did. Secondly, you know, I mean, you know, he had, a, you know, he had a, um, a, an agenda. He had a goal. Right. And that goal was to fight for justice. 
right, to fight for justice, right, by any means, you know, necessary. So we still have this fight for justice, right? We have to fight for justice. We have to oppose oppression, right? Uh, we have to make sure that people get their rights within the, the, the society. So that calls for us to get involved, right? As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, right? Whoever of you sees a, right, uh, a, a, a wrong, but you will be biyadi, then change it with a hand, right? For in them you stop it for bili And if you're unable to change it with your hand, then change it with your with your tongue, right? With your speech, right? For in them you for 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 be qalbi. Then hate it if you're unable to do that. Then hate it within your heart, right? And that is the weakest form, right? Weakest form of of, of iman in regards to uh, standing up for justice, right? Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? One of the things that he um, uh, made mention or reference when he was uh, a prophet that even in Jahiliyyah, right? He recognized this this uh, this deed in Jahiliyyah, right? Was the uh, the 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 the, um, uh, the organization that the that the Meccans that they formed, right? To fight oppression. Right, to make sure that people got their rights. He said that if this organization was established now, that he will also join it. Right. So we, you know, we have a lot of work to do, right? We have a lot of work to do. I mean, we have a say in everything, right? It's not just, you know, hardcore, you know, Islam, you know, the Allah and the angels, but we also have to stand up for justice. Right. We also have a say in, you know, um, you know, education. We have a say, whatever field that we in, right? Islam should be represented in all of those fields. So whatever skill, whatever talent, whatever, you know, uh, ability that we have, we have to find the Islamic knowledge for that. And then we should be able to uh, uh, give our perspective and, and get involved, you know, uh, uh, Islamically, right, to, to, to make this um, society better uh, and, and, and in which we live in, you know, Wallahu hey. Alam. Inshallah, uh, Yusuf, before we're going to take Abdul Jalil next, but inshallah, before Abdul Jalil uh, commences to ask this question, um, just because I know some people are asking about the purchase of the book, maybe you want to go ahead and, you know, give us, inshallah, what's happening this coming weekend on the 25th, um, and how people can attend that and possibly get a book, uh, a book that day and get it signed as well. Um, yes, so um, we do have um, um, the books that are available um, on iburiedmalcolm.com. Um, so if you go um, type in uh, iburiedmalcolm.com, um, right, then um, it will take you to um, purchasing the book um, and tickets for, for the event. Um, just note that the, um, that particular site has been set up for, um, uh, for the book signing. Um, and there is an addition, uh, uh, if you just want a book to be shipped, right, then um, we can also share um, a link where you could just purchase a book and then uh, the shipping cost will be included uh, for that um, um, as well. And I can probably share both of those, uh, both of those links um, uh, with um, uh, email Abu, um, Abu Sumeya. Uh, and I don't know if, it, if you're able to share, maybe share it, the fly in the links um, in the, in the follow up email, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. So we can definitely yeah. uh, send it in an email, inshallah. I'm also reposting it here in the chat for you guys uh, okay. to see. It is uh, February 25th, inshallah, ta'ala. Um, next weekend, uh, this coming weekend from 1 to 4 p.m., it's going to be at King University uh, in the Wilkins Theater, 1000 Morris Ave in Union, New Jersey. Um, and it has a scan, uh, you know, a QR code where you can scan and shout out to buy your tickets yeah. and buy your books. It's a twenty dollar entry fee. Alhamdulillah, you have Sheikh Muhammad Jabir, uh, Imam Ali Jabir, and then Doctor Yasser, Yasser Shabazz, and um, Doctor Yasser. She is the um, the daughter, uh, the second oldest um, for for Malcolm. Um, and uh, it too, it's so it's not just, it's a it's not just a book signing, but it's also um, a, you know it's a lecture. So we're gonna be actually talking about some of the highlights um, in the um, in the book and, you know, what makes the second edition different from the first edition. And of course, within that, we're going to be talking about, you know, Malcolm, we're going to be talking about my grandfather, we're going to be talking about um, the Adina Law Universal Arab Association uh, within within uh, these discussions. Inshallah. Bismillah.
you can unmic yourself, Abdul Jalil. Uh, there you go. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ma MashaAllah, may Allah reward you, our brothers, for the um, information. Um, one of my questions um, in regards to the Imam, Professor Izzadeen, yes. um, and even the history that you have uh, imparted or shared with us, why do you think that this uh, information has not been... Uh, presented inside many messages, uh, you know, uh, especially those who, you know, claim to be on a particular, uh, you know, Quran and soon, sooner pattern? Um, yeah, excellent question. And um, I, I was, I mean, I mean, two reasons. I mean, of course, um, you know, I mean, one reason, I mean, just having that, that political agenda um, you know, if not, you know, actually, um, you know, mentioning, you know, uh, the existence of this particular organization, you know, especially for, as I mentioned uh, throughout the lectures that, um, you know, not even mentioning, you know, my grandfather or, you know, the organization that he was actually, you know, uh, part of. Um, I, I think the second reason, too, is that um, our focus was more so on just the Dawah. Um, you know, just, you know, educating um, and building the, the Muslim community. Um, not necessarily, you know, in, the, in that forefront um, of, of, of activism, you know. So if you look at most of the, the other um, groups out there, they were kind of like in the forefront of, of just activism. Uh, Professor Azadine, he was about da'wah, he was about education, right? He was about teaching. Right, and making sure that, you know, that um, everyone that he came in contact with, right, knew uh, the, the tenets of Islam. So he wasn't an activist. Uh, he was professor, he was Ustad. And, you know, and if you know about Egypt, this is the title that they actually give. So, you know, that was his focus, right? He started this organization and he started branches, right? And it was to, again, educate, you know um, the the Muslims in their in their ranks, and if you look at even some of these newspaper articles, it talks about the five pillars of Islam. It talks about you know different fix, fix aspects. It talks about the you know the different eids, right? So he was about community. He was about community um, building, right? They bought acres they, in Hamilton. They bought and and that was the um, the location, um, the headquarters in Hamilton. They bought um, you know, hundreds of acres down there to the point that even the city of Hamilton, they called that, that his land, uh, as a Dean village, right. It was officially changed to as, as a Dean village currently. And we still have the, the branch out there in, um, in Buffalo, it was, it's called Jebel Arabia, right. Um, the, the, the Arabic mountain, right. Um, they have, uh, 400 acres of, of land out there, um, you know, that that's um, part of the, the organization, right? And a lot of, and, and you know, he did make the move there and he, he, be, he began to, you know, establish, you know, the uh, the community out there on that particular land and, and, that, and that property, right? So that was one of the major differences that that's, he was all about building community and he was about, you know, teaching and educating um, in Dawa and not necessarily um, in the, um, uh, the Black uh, the black, uh, the black movement, the black activist movement, uh, like you may have seen, you know, Marco Max, or you may have seen, uh, you know, even uh, uh, members of the Black Panther and so forth. So they got a lot of that publicity, right, because they were in that civil rights movement or in the in the black national movement. But the professor, as a dean, he was about, you know, um, just education and 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 making sure that the um, that we as or you know the Muslim families were actually educated. So if you think about it too, right? You know, uh, Professor as a dean, he was a teacher of my grandfather. I'm a third generation, so my, you know, my my uh, my grandfather embraced Islam. You know, my parents, you know, are Muslim, right? And I'm a third generation Muslim, right? But technically, fourth generation. You know, if I add Professor D as a dean, you know, to that equation, right? And then my children are actually, you know, I mean, then I have children myself. So you talk about really like five generations of Islam, right? And and so you can, you know, and, and, the, and the, the Islam that we're getting is, is Islam that, for example, you know, um, that we got at that time or that my grandparents, my grandparents uh, got and my parents got, 
right, was the Islam that many of the, 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 the reverse to Islam actually get, right? But imagine 86 years later, right? 86 years later, right, um, uh, up, to, up, up to current date, right? So, you know, a lot of the materials, you know, you know, we got as, a, uh, you know, my, my parents got, my grandparents, you know, got, right? So there's a lot of maturity that comes with that as well. Right. So when we look, for example, at different communities that may be splitting or arguing or, you know, talk about difference of opinions, you know, I mean, 86 years ago, we've already been groomed and educated about, you know, a lot of these topics. Right. So these things don't don't phase us, you know, as 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 a community. And this is why we're able to kind of, you know, uh, continue to continue to go. Well, Mashallah, Mashallah, Allah Akbar. There's uh there were two uh, two questions in Shalat Tala that I saw. Um, one basically asking, have you seen the movie Malcolm X with Denzel Washington? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And then the second question was basically if the event uh, coming up this weekend, book signing and the lectures, are going to be uh, live streamed or anything like that. Um, so the question, yes, of course, I've I've saw that in high school when it came out. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, you know, we actually took a field trip, you know, um. You know, uh, as a school for the for the viewing of of Malcolm X, um, and you know, I remember seeing at the end they showed a, a quick picture of my grandfather. You know, uh, uh, at the very end, I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's my grandfather!" Right? It was just a video clip, right? <laughs> a, a picture. Um, but Subhanallah, I mean, the thing, and even I mean, most documentaries, and most movies about Malcolm X, it focuses on the negative aspect of you know his life right a lot of time is spent on that right um and then it also you know um you know talked about you know it goes a lot into details about the nation of islam right but only a small percentage of it was is talking about his real his his real conversion to to islam Right. So as a Muslim, you know, I feel disappointed. I feel that, you know, I mean, the aspects of his life uh, that that should have been a lot more emphasis on the Islamic aspect of his life. A lot more research should have been done and a lot more things should have actually been highlighted and, and uh, right in that. Right. But, you know, of course, I mean, you're talking about the entertainment business. Right. So, you know, you have to have to sell. Right. You have to sell, you know, uh, uh, movies. Right, uh, you know, um, to to make to make money, right? But I mean, one positive thing about it is, of course, you can see that you know, I mean, as a young man, the struggles that you know many young people go through, right, and then the the evolution, you know, of a person, right, to try to improve, to find the truth, right. So that is one thing that that, that I believe that is a positive, you know, from the movie. But just wish that there was a little bit more focus on the Islamic component. And in fact. Um, my father initially, when the planning was um, started, my father was supposed to play the a live role um, as my grandfather, you know, in in the movie, right? But that part of the movie, um, it was cut out. I, it, well, it was, you know, it was cut out. It never even happened, right? So it came up in the initial discussion, right? But right, uh, we never, uh, my grandfather or my father never had the opportunity, you know, to actually. Uh, play that play that role, you know, and actually tell a little bit more about that that story of you know the the janaza and you know actually going to uh, claim the body and performing the janaza and all of those aspects as well. Um, okay, this is a recent um, documentary, Blood Brothers, Malcolm X, and um, and there's another one too out there. It's pretty it's pretty good. It's um, Who Killed Malcolm. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed with that one as well because the brother came all the way to New Jersey and didn't even stop in Elizabeth, right? All of that was in Newark and um, in East Orange, and uh, you know, and so even with that documentary, you know, um, it was like okay, you know, uh, the Elizabeth community was part of that whole process, right? You know, so like you know, uh, we the, the uh, we didn't get any calls, we didn't get any emails, right? We weren't even part of that that conversation to tell our story, right? Our narrative about you know um, who killed Malcolm and you know and and the threats that were also put on uh, on on the lives of of, of the people in, in Elizabeth. Okay, inshallah. So um, uh, I don't know if we have, we have time for one more question. We want to. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. 
Uh, one last question, inshallah ta'ala. Um, you know, feel free to unmic yourself uh, or place it in the chat. If not, um, then we'll end here, inshallah ta'ala. So, anyone? Um, and too, I think uh, some you said um, about the book signing too. If, I'm, uh, oh, if it's gonna, yes, yeah, if it's gonna be actually recorded live. Um, oh yeah. So um, no, we're not gonna um, we're not going to um, live stream it. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, we're probably uh, we're gonna record it and we probably share um, some footage, um, but it won't be uh, live live stream. Um. Mm -hmm. For those that cannot make it, I mean, we're, we're also working on, you know, a book like book tours as well. So this is just the initial um, uh, book release, uh, book signing. Um, so inshallah, Tyler, uh, we're planning on doing a book tour um, in uh, locally in, in Jersey and other communities, but also within uh, within the U.S. as well. So that that means you know, everybody reach out to your local masjid, to your board, tell them, listen, yes. I want tour to come through here inshallah ta'ala and then uh you know reach out to Ustad Yusuf Javid inshallah ta'ala and uh, love, uh definitely I know I see sister Zaina I, I know we, we love to come to Taqwa <laughs> <laughs> inshallah <laughs> so that our uh, Taqwa is definitely on, on on our list um <laughs> again um Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. I may not spend with Tyler. I reward you. I love you, family. Alhamdulillah. I mean, I reward you, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, for all of your efforts. Alhamdulillah, and the efforts of your family. And Mashallah, may you continue to allow you guys to be plant uh, seed planters. Alhamdulillah, those farmers who Mashallah are planting those seeds, and that beautiful crop, their fruits uh, come out from that. Alhamdulillah, and that that generation, the generations to come, continue to benefit from the legacy uh, that your family established, uh, you know, here in the United States. I mean, I mean, and also, you know, for those who don't know, Mashallah, who said Jabir, Yusuf Jabir, Mashallah, he is an Arabic teacher, a fishu. I'm doing that. Be looking forward to it. Yeah, Arabic yeah. stuff like that, you know, reach out to him, you know I mean? Check him out on his pages and stuff like that. I'm like, he, got, he has a new book that he dropped as well uh, regarding the Arabic language. Uh, so, you know, kind of uh, support that as well, Inshallah. Tell if you want to plug that in, Yusuf, and let us know about that as well, Inshallah. Now, inshallah, alhamdulillah, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back into the to the um, grind uh, of teaching um, uh, this summer. Uh, so make dua. Um, uh, but yes, I, I'm, you know, Arabic teacher, I, I do curriculum development, uh, teacher training um, and, you know, just a whole lot of things, you know, workshops, you know, with the, the Arabic, uh, the Arabic language. Um, alhamdulillah, I was uh, blessed to um uh, do my first publication um the buried treasure which is um focusing on uh, learning how to read and write um arabic um so that is i wanted to start with that you know because that's where the great the greater reward is at you know um as um, defined by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, to make sure that you know the muslims you know they're able to read um read the read the quran um so i uh, started with that inshallah you know i, I do plan to make some more in, in, um, in the future and inshallah, I do plan on getting back to uh, teaching, uh, you know, the community. Uh, alhamdulillah. We got a bunch of reverts waiting for you, man. So <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we got to set it up, inshallah. We got to set it up. Alhamdulillah. I put the website out there. Um, it's Arabic Institute. I put. I type the uh, know someone's accent. Yeah, inshallah. Bismillah. Uh, so that's that's um, the website. So you can um, just see some basic information there. And then um, again, I'm, I'm just building, um, rebuilding the website. Um, but also um, you can um, contact me and follow me on, on my social media. Um, um, that's uh, posted on my website. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And then for those uh, who are asking about this recording, inshallah ta'ala, we will be uploading uploading this recording to our Mass New York uh, YouTube page, inshallah ta'ala. So once that's uploaded, uh, we'll share it out with everyone as well uh, so that you guys uh, can go back and, uh, you know, see it from the beginning and, you know, share it with others, inshallah ta'ala. With that, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to end there. Jazakumullah khairan to all of you for attending. Alhamdulillah, barakallahu fiqh, Ustaz Yusuf, for uh, giving us some of your precious time. And may Allah make it heavy on the scale with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you find him well pleased with you uh, and loving you. Alhamdulillah, and grant you his mercy, his forgiveness, and entrance into his paradise. I mean, and I'll let you go ahead and close this out, inshallah, for us to, you know, end the session.
طيب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد ان لا اله الا انت ونستغفرك ونتوب اليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لا في قوس الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام